Hey guys, welcome. Raphael here. Uh, I have another kind of quick lesson. We're going to talk about the Tableau Story Mode. Uh, last time we looked at MLB Run Differential Statistics going back to 1957. So what you see on the screen here is the dashboard we created together looking at all teams for all years going back to 1957. We also downloaded some logos that represented the teams so that, you know, basically you can click on whatever logo you want and that'll actually filter the uh, visualization here based on that team. Um, right now I have my team Texas identified and you can kind of see all the run differential performances going back to 1957. So pretty cool little dashboard we created in the past lesson. Now we're going to kind of dig in a little bit deeper and we're going to use this data to kind of create a story using the Tableau story mode. Now, I like the Tableau story mode uh, specifically to kind of pinpoint different insights that you're uncovering on a, a large data set or a dashboard that kind of looks like this. It's good to go. Uh, users that are uh, comfortable with Tableau are able to, you know, kind of dig into the dashboard and identify trends that way. But for those that maybe don't know where to start, um, I tend to use story mode in my day-to-day -day job to kind of, you know, help others uh, interact with the dashboard as a use case example, or I use it for presentations. So let's say, for instance, you want to dig in deeper and create a presentation on run differential and identify certain insights out of this data. Uh, I'd like to look at outliers of this statistic, right? So for instance, last time we created a dashboard with filters on World Series champs. So if I filter this da this dashboard on World Series champs, I'll, I kind of want to see what's going on with this one right here, right? The Minnesota Twins. A negative run differential in 1987, but they ended up winning the World Series. And you see all these other teams that were in reference, in context, much better in this statistic. So little outliers like that, uh, that's why I would use story mode. Uh, you can use it for other methods too if you want to drill down. Uh, say you have a performance measure looking at revenue or sales for a certain company and you want to drill down by uh, department, drill down at the state level, or if you want to zoom in and out. Those are all different kind of uh, use case scenarios you can use when creating a story in Tableau. You want to make sure that you keep it concise, simple, uh, not too crowded um, in terms of view, uh, because if you're driving the conversation, uh, you want to make sure it's simple and driving towards the point, point or the insights driven out of the data. Uh, you also want to make sure too that it's fast, right? You don't want to have a bad user experience when creating stories. So usually what I do is um, if I'm driving the conversation or the presentation towards certain insights, I like to create separate views out of the data or the dashboard and use those as story points uh, throughout the conversation. So uh, we'll start off real quick. Um, if I go to the story ta uh, button right here, it looks like a, a book with a plus sign. If I click on that, uh, you're going to have your story here, uh, blank canvas. Uh, you'll have your title. You have your first kind of story point navigation button. So up here is going to be navigation button. So if you add more story point, points, notice how your navigation buttons increase. And that's your navigation pane, right? And then on the left side here, you're going to have your sandbox right so everything you've kind of created in your desktop file can be used in story and story mode you can use dashboards you can use uh, worksheets uh, you just you can't combine stuff right you can't um, use it as a dashboard method which is why you're able to kind of use dashboards as a single container in the story point so if you're if there's two single worksheets that you want to kind of put in tandem, then I would recommend first, first, you know, constructing it in a dashboard mode and then add that dashboard to your story point. So you can also drag text in here. So let's 
play around real quick. I'm going to add the I have some sheets here that I, um, I called out specifically. So let's look at the lowest run differential. So notice how I have this specific to a team. Uh, the, the lowest run differential since 1957. Uh, had a negative 353. And they also looked at uh, every individual game for that specific team. And you can see if it's red, they lost. If it's blue, they won. And you can also see the, the mark or the number associated with that single game uh, differential. And then you can add your caption here. You know, let's say lowest run differ differential. And then you can, you know, go on to the next one. You can also move your story points. So I want this to be first. So I'll move it over here. And let's go on to the next one, right? But within this story point you added, you can actually drag a text box in here. Uh, let's say this is a text box that adds context. And that will show up right here, right? Uh, the one thing I do like about this too is you can add it, you can add annotations, right? So let's say for instance we see a noticeable dive as of right here. It went up, down, went up, down. So some stuff occurred here, right? We have some, um, let's say for instance, this is the final dive to the max lowest run differential and we wanna add a annotation right there, right? So I'm gonna right click and annotate that mark right there. It'll show the game number and what the run differential was at that time because remember we're providing an annotation to the mark. So let's say this is where it really goes to shit <laughs> for the team, right? As it goes all the way down. You do that. Notice how it stays tied to the mark. But we can also format it. Let's add a line. Black. Let's get that line end of an arrow. You can also play around with the font, font size, center aligned. There we go. The cool thing about this that I like is the annotation stick, stick with your story mode um, and doesn't go to the worksheet. So I'm not going to end up in the worksheet and see the same annotation. It's, it's strictly tied to the mode, the story mode you have, right? So that's what I like about that. You can also mess with the size of the story mode you want. Let's say you want to make it uh, the width larger and you can mess around with that. Uh, there's also the same type of formats that you see here that you're used to in dashboards, uh, but just uh, specific to the story itself. You can also mess around with the navigation pane, right? Caption boxes, which we have now. Let's say we want to do numbers. There's your number. Dots. Arrows. And just have one, one of four, you know. Take off the arrows and just have the boxes if you have, you know, less than the number of uh, navigation boxes that you don't need the arrows. I'll stick with the caption boxes for now. We'll add one more just to kind of get a feel of what we're doing. Let's add the highest run differential. Different story. You see a positive run differential here. Um, and then you can add text boxes, annotations, and whatnot for that as well. Um, this shift gears. Uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you have your worksheets done, your dashboards done, then you really have your sandbox ready to build and kind of create a story that you want to kind of drive the conversation. Um, just a few tips. Make sure that it's simple. Make sure that you're easy to, they're easy to kind of go back and forth. Uh, and from story point to story point. And then you just basically want to drive the conversation, right? You don't want to create uh, different kind of 
questions that elicit out of that story, that story mode. So, for the purpose of this MLB run, run differential stat, I created a story that looked at not only the run differential by certain kind of outliers, like max, min, run differentials, specific teams, but I also looked at it at looked at it as far as comparing that statistics to other to another offensive category statistic and see if we can identify some trends out of that. So more to that, uh, I'll explain that next. If I go to my, I'm going to go to my Tableau public profile now. And the story mode I have out there, I'll click on that one. And then the one thing I like about Tableau Public is you can add like a quick description in the bottom. I'll go to that real quick. It says data from the Baseball Cube website examined run differential results for MLB teams going back to 1957 against some other offensive stats to identify some very interesting trends. All right. So first I start off with the dashboard we created. I added that as my first story point. I kind of wanted to show like the starting place of the dashboard and what the MLB run differential stat looks like. Um just from, from first glance, right? So I added that as my first story point here, and you see in the navigation uh, pane, and will be run differential view. You can still interact with it as a dashboard. It works as such. And then I kind of wanted to go towards the right in navigation and basically pinpoint some outliers in the, the stat, but also look at these teams in terms of their, their MLB run differential versus let's say another stat like win percentage, right? So I created another dashboard view that looks at MLB run differential versus win percentage stat. So a few things to keep note, as you can see now, in terms of Tableau Public, is you need to kind of mess around with the formatting, uh, primarily because you're gonna get something like this, right? So what happens is you see the text is way over the view. So let's fix that real quick. I'm going back to my story, and notice how on the desktop, it's going to look fine. Yep, there it is, see? We want to be able to fix that, so one thing I'll do is... Uh, That's kind of what we're used to seeing, right, on the profile, the full screen. So what I'll do here is I'll do a quick fix. So I'm going to move this. This right here I created with a separator, but it was just a text box with a really, really, really thin uh, height. And I created that with a separator and just formatted the uh, background. And then you can add basically just some text there so that the box stays in there and just make it the same color as the background. All right, so let's take a look at this real quick. It's a dashboard I created that looks at the run differential. Again, just for the last 30 full seasons and the win percentage, right? So notice how your run differential is your y-axis going up and down. Your win percentage is your x-axis going uh, left to right. And Notice real quick the color scheme as well. The color scheme is represented by the one per win percentage. And let's see. One thing to make sure. I'm going to make this smaller. Because I noticed that the box. There we go. So notice how 
Uh, we have a shift in the line, which is the comparison of run differential to win percentage. Uh, notice in the 90s, we had a much, uh, I guess, leaning correlation to the right, right? You notice how everything's kind of more concentrated um, and the corresponding line, the linear line, is leaning more towards the, the win percentage. So basically what that means is you have a, a much more competitive landscape, uh, not many blowouts in games on average, and your win percentage is a little bit more, um, I guess, kind of leaned, leaned more towards the right. Now, notice how if you go more towards present time, that line that you see is more uh, swaying back more towards the run differential. So what that tells me is you're going to have a lot more games that have, uh, they're not as close, a lot more blowouts. So that leans more towards a disparity in the run, di run differential. Uh, you'll have a lot more uh, outliers, whereas in the 90s, they were more concentrated. But now they're being more stretched out, right? So that's one thing I noticed in terms of run differential um, to more present time. A um, few other things here, too. Sub-500 win percentage teams also experienced positive run differentials in the 90s. So your sub-500 teams. So notice how we'll look at this one, right? The Baltimore Orioles in 1995. They had a win percentage of 0.493, yet had a run differential in the positive, right? So what that tells me is a lot more competitiveness, a lot more one-run games, not many blowouts. So, but then if you go to the, the odds or the 2010s, notice how most of the red or orange type marks that represent a sub 500 win percentage are all underneath and have negative um, run differentials. So that's just telling me that there's just more of a stretch and less of a concentration of teams um, within run differential. I noticed this as well. Let's see if we can go smaller. Okay, so that is a quick look at run differential versus win percentage. The next one we're going to look at is a, it's a view of run differential versus win percentage, but I included a, an indicator for a uh, number, of, number of one wrong game, games. Uh, the one thing that I noticed when looking at specific teams throughout a season is you may have a team that is on a hot streak, right? But they're really winning uh, uh, really close contested games. So what happens is that has a major impact if you're accumulating all those one-run run wins to your win percentage, but not really much of an impact towards your run differential, right, towards other teams. So, for instance, if a team wins 10 consecutive one-run games, then that's only a net of 10 to their run differential over the span of 10 games. But yet if another team wins one game by 11 runs, then they're going to have a, a much larger increase in one game only in specific to that other scenario where that team won 10 consecutive one-run games. So I wanted to kind of take a look at that. So I created a scatter plot here on the next, the next view. I like this. Uh, the black background really makes it pop. Uh, I have win, win percentage in the x-axis. I have run differential in the y-axis. Notice how the sizing of each mark, it's represented by the number of one, one run games. So if I go to this huge mark here, this is represented by the Arizona Diamondbacks in 2015. They had 19 one run games. And then the color of each mark is the win percentage specific to that cohort of one run games. So, for instance, the same example, the 19 one-run games in 2015 for the Diamondbacks. 
a 5.79 win percentage of those 19 games. And then you can also go here to another one that's red, large one. Baltimore Orioles in 2002, they had 17 one-run games, but yet had a win percentage of .176. So that that is something that basically has a larger impact towards the win percentage, but really may not have an impact towards uh, run differential. So for instance, let's look at this one right here, right? Uh, the Baltimore Orioles in 1995, they had 16 one-run games, a really weak one-run game win percentage of .25, but they still ended the season that year with a run differential of 64, right? So although they did pretty poor in terms of, in terms of those 16 one-run games, they still had a positive run, run differential. Now, let's also look at, so let's look at this one. Notice the 1977 Mets. They had eight one-run games, and they did extremely well, winning about 87% of those games, but still ended up very bleak uh, with a negative run differential of negative 76 I also added a highlight here. So let's say if I want to look at my team, the Texas Rangers. I can take a quick glance at those those teams through those for that season for all those seasons and see how it looks like in relationship to all the other marks. So in 2016, they had 13 one run games. They won about 61% of those, but had a season run de differential of Eight. I'm trying to see. Look at that one. So in 2010, that was the year that the Rangers made it to the World Series. They had six one-run games, won about two-thirds of those, but had a run differential of 100. And then, let's say, for instance, we also want to look at it by cohorts of one-run games. So I created some bins of those one run games and now you can highlight zero to five four five to nine ten to fourteen uh fifteen to nineteen twenty one to tw uh to thirty to thirty plus so let's look at thirty plus look at this one the Pittsburgh Pirates in nineteen sixty eight had thirty three one run games wow but on average if we look at maybe this one, yeah, 10 to 14. Notice how, on average, you're going to get a much more concentrated uh, run differential around zero. So the more one-run games you have, whether you win or lose, you'll probably stay more anchored towards, uh, on average, zero for run differential. Whereas if you have zero to four, Notice how it's much more, there's much more disparity towards that zero run differential. A lot more that are in the negatives, a lot more in the positives. So, yeah, that's one way I wanted to look at it. So, basically, win percentage, if I wanted to look at those that had a much higher win percentage, then perhaps they're also going to have a much higher run differential. But as you get closer to the average in the win percentage, then that's where you start seeing the, those outliers of maybe teams that had more one-run games, maybe teams that were much more successful in one-run games, but uh, overall had a really poor season, which ended up them having a negative run differential. So I like using this scatter plot to compare both measures, the win percentage and the run differential and then add in the uh, extra kind of call out of those one run games by size. And then I have some examples. I just added some examples. I took a look at the lowest run differential in 2003, the Detroit Tigers. I looked at other things like, um, let's see, other things like 
the highest, which was the 2022 Los Angeles Dodgers. I took a look at the highest win percentage as well. So Seattle Mariners. That you see, I have the New York Mets there, and also the smallest range. I kind of wanted to take a look at the run differential for a certain team that had the smallest range. So uh, I'll give you, I'll let you see what that looks like. So notice on the on the highest and lowest, it's just a straight kind of um, forty five degree angle throughout the season. But look at this one, uh, Kansas City Royals on their way down, negative, then uh, the positive, negative, positive. Averaging out to, you know, between uh, zero and then what they ended up at as negative 19. So a lot of pits and valleys in this season. Uh, so I wanted to kind of bring that towards, call that out specifically and look at that in the story point as well. I also looked at this next one, which was the money, money ball call out. So in, 2000, in 2002, the Oakland Athletics had a really, you know, storybook type season. Uh, and it was um, cinema. It was basically on the cinema screen uh, called out in the film Moneyball. So notice how you have your rent differential has a steep incline. That's going to be the uh, the 20 plus game uh, win streak that they had that year uh, that broke the AL record. I also looked at some other stuff too. So World Series winner that uh, 1987 Minnesota Twins. So the call-out had the the only World Series champion with a negative uh, run differential. So notice, you, again, you see, still see some pits and pits and, fall, and valleys here. Uh, but for the most part, it looks like they did just enough to make the playoffs and then had a really, really great postseason with Kirby Puckett. A few really quick, so longest losing streak. The Phillies, 23 games. You can see that specifically here and how that's much more steeper decline. The largest win streak, the Cleveland Guardians in 2017, right here. There's that incline. And then I also wanted to call out my Texas Rangers in 2010. So I added annotations to this one. So notice how... I'm going to make this bigger. I don't like the way it looks. So I made some annotations here specific to that season. I'll read this to you. Culmination of a proposed five-year plan by GM John Daniels stemming from the 2000 trade of Mark Teixeira. Three key players who were impactful this season. Acquired through the trade were shortstop Elvis Andrus, pitchers Matt Harrison, and closer Neftali Feliz. Other key pieces acquired, platoon outfielder David Murphy, starting pitcher Tommy Hunter, center fielder Julio Borbon, first baseman Mitch Moreland. So basically just saying that there was a huge trade that happened three years prior, and all those pieces, pieces collected from the trade were actually very, very instrumental in this season. And then we all also wanted to call out some specific trades that were impactful to the team. July 1st, we acquired Benji Molina from the San Francisco Giants. A uh, huge battery for the team that year. And then eight days later, we acquired Cliff Lee via trade. And then I just a quick call out here. This was the first division title for the Texas Rangers since 99. And then they made it to the World Series. Um, and lost to the San Francisco Giants. I was actually at the game when they lost, but it was really cool to be watching a World Series game live. So notice how I added a text box, some annotations, and this is just specific to that story point. So if I went to the worksheet that I created for this story, I won't see that here. Um, all the annotations will stick to the story construction and not the worksheet. So... That's pretty much it. Uh, notice how I used every point to kind of identify some outliers in the dashboard. Um, I really hope that y'all had a quick kind of grimy view of what a storyboard looks like, story point. Um, feel free to mess around with this on my profile, take a look, and create your own story points. I'd like to see you guys kind of convert one of your dashboards to a storybook mode and, 
you know, let me know what y'all think and of this quick lesson and show me what you've put together and let's let's chat. Thanks. Bye.